Hello, my name is AJ Howard and I'm a trustee of the Kleinfelder Syndrome Association charity. One of the good things I found out about these masks is that you can do uh, puppetry and people can't see your mouth move, which is uh, it's quite, quite good really. So that's a, that's a bonus, isn't it? This here is Toby. Say hello, Toby. Hello. Now, Toby was diagnosed when he was one or two years old. But uh, at the moment, he's not one or two, he's nearly seven. How old are you, Toby? I'm about eight, actually. I'm not seven. Why do you always say I'm seven? I'm not seven, I'm not seven, I'm not seven. You don't know nothing. And that is something significant with Kleinfelder syndrome as well. Or people that are XXY. They might have tantrums, but you won't know it. You'll just think, if they're undiagnosed, why is my son acting like this? I'm not, I'm acting like nothing. I'm not acting like nothing, me. I'm not, I'm not. There's nothing wrong with me. Anyway, that is what it's like if you don't understand Kleinfelter syndrome XXY. You won't understand it. How about school? What's school like? The teachers don't know anything. They don't know anything. My teachers had to phone up the Kleinfelter syndrome association. And that's a familiar story with Kleinfelter syndrome, XXY, the clinical name. You go to the doctors and they do not know it exists. You go to them with red flags and they don't recognise red flags because they don't know the red flags at all. It's, uh, it's terrifying really how many people will go to the doctor and they will miss the red flags, present them on a plate to the doctor and they won't see it at all. It's depressing, but you know, what can you do? Hello, my name's Dave. I was diagnosed when I was, oh, that's a noisy one, that one. Listen to that, can you hear that? Come on, well, these loud noises, I don't like them at all. I should've got my headphones on. Anyway, what was I saying? I can't remember what I was saying. I can't remember, what was I saying? What was I saying? Hello? I've forgotten. And that's familiar with Kleinfelter syndrome as well. The clinical name, XXY. You can be talking about something, hear a loud noise and completely forget what you were talking about. And have no recollection at all of what you were talking about. Very common that is. Hello, my name's Simon and I was diagnosed when I was 34 with Kleinfelter syndrome. I was married at the time, um, not married anymore unfortunately. My wife left me for another man and had kids with him instead. I'm not happy about that. Um, when I first went for the tests, they said uh, it's, it's unfortunate but there is treatment for you. You can have IVF and you can do micro tests on, and something else. And we paid thousands and thousands of pounds for the testing. And at the end of the day, they said to us, Unfortunately, it's a bit too late for you. If you were diagnosed when you were younger, you had a higher chance, you had more viable sperm. But at your age, unfortunately, in this instance, we can't do anything. So now, I see my ex-wife walking down the road with a pram, with babies, with another man, and it just, it's just upsetting. The Climfair Syndrome Association has many people like me. And they are great. To meet other people with similar stories is nice, but it's still quite a tragedy, to be honest with you. Quite a tragedy. Hello, my name's Graham, and I was diagnosed when I was 44. It was an incidental find. I had a lump on my chest, and the doctor thought, why have I got a lump on my chest? And then they looked at me and thought, maybe I had gynecomastia, and that was a bit weird for some, someone at 44. So they did some tests and it came out that I had this, this congenital condition the whole time. I mean, I had gynecomastia when I was a kid, when I was at school. I saw the doctors then, but they didn't do anything. They thought, they said, well, they thought and they said, and they said, it didn't matter. It's common in boys. I mean, I was tortured when I was at school. I was tortured 
You know what I mean? You got you got breast tissue when you were a boy at school. And I was tortured, I mean I was bullied every day for at least three years. At least. Anyway. The difference now to back then is now I've got a voice. Back then I was as shy as anything. I'd be the one that wouldn't speak. Sit in the corner and say nothing. That was me. I couldn't read properly. That wasn't picked up either. There was no link to my medical condition because no one knew about my medical condition. I don't understand it. Due to that lump on my chest. If I hadn't had that, it would never have come about. I had zero libido, never wanted children. So the chances of me actually getting a fertility test were non-existent. And yet the doctors said to me, when I was diagnosed, it's normally a fertility test. I said, how is that possible if you've got no libido? Not happy. Not happy at all. I did, however, start on testosterone replacement therapy after diagnosis and uh, that's made me feel alive. I feel awake. I talk too much now. I'm talking all the time now. This is a different me, an alive me. I never used to be like this. But I'm still sad. Hello, my name's Travis and I was diagnosed when I was 49. What I don't understand is how my diagnosis was missed when I was younger. Why I say that is in my 20s, I queried with the doctors. I mean, bearing in mind this is a very sensitive subject. I queried, why do they not understand when I went to them with erectile dysfunction, they had to say it was in my head, that I was self-inflicted. Shall I say that again? It was self-inflicted. They gave me antidepressants to start with, and then they told me that I needed psychosexual counselling. I mean, come on. Come on, doctors. Why did you not know that I had red flags? The primary red flag that I had was small testicles. It's embarrassing to say but I had small testicles. I saw so many doctors, GPs and urologists too. I had operations by urologists. I must have seen a dozen of them and nobody got it at all. I don't understand how this was missed. Unfortunately, it is missed a lot when people have small testicles. That's why the Kleinfeld Syndrome Association made this leaflet. I'll just uh, get it up. This one. It says, lift the fig leaf. This leaflet, we give out to doctors at conferences. Um, I'll show you some pictures of it a bit close up because you can't see this little picture here on the next images, which will be over there on the screen. One second, please. This leaflet, this small leaflet is all we can go use to persuade doctors that people have small testicles who are XXY, Kleinfeld syndrome. Please, please, next time you see a patient, please check. Thanks for your time. Hello, my name's Dave, we met before. I can't remember what I was talking about, but we met before. Anyway, I was going to tell you what it's like to be a member of the Kleinfair Syndrome Association. Well, you get perks, don't you? You get a newsletter, you get, uh, you get to go on social gatherings where you can meet people just like yourself. Um, it's really nice because it's like a, a new family away from your normal family. You can meet uh, 
young people, really young ones, and quite old ones as well, middle-aged. There was all sorts of people there who have been diagnosed, but there's not that many, because most of us will never ever get diagnosed, which I think is a bit sad. Um, social gatherings are good, annual general meetings, and some of us like to go on activity weekends, but not everyone is an active person, because if you've got like issues with your health, like uh, weakness and stuff, you maybe don't want to go rock climbing, but you can just go there for a walk and a talk, meet in the bar, I mean it's lovely, table tennis, things like that, and it's, uh, it's just a nice thing to do. Nice to meet people just like you. Is that enough, is it? That would do, wouldn't it? Will that do? Alright, thank you. Thank you. Bye.